I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to look at how to remove duplicates from your uh, data sets and queries. And we'll look at this by using uh, several different methods, and uh, hopefully you can use these in your project. So without further ado, let's get to our duplicates in Microsoft Access. Okay, so I'm using a file that uh, we have used before, and I created two tables in here just for demonstration. One is an orders table, and as you can see, it has uh, a list of uh, uh, product orders, not the order items, uh, just the sort of header section of an order. And then I've got some order items, which are the actual items that go on the order. So you can see the order ID is in the third column, and you can see uh, the toys that were ordered uh, by uh, on each particular order. And uh, so you can see the orders, and then the order items that are on each order, and uh, we can uh, take a look at how to uh, create a query from here. Okay, so I went to create, and then uh, query design, and then we can drag onto our query design. We just drag those tables from the left onto the gray area. And as you can see, we've got orders and order items. And what most people normally do is when they see that order ID, um, they'll just uh, join on the order ID, and, uh, and then they'll grab the fields that they want, say last name, first name, order item, and order price, and maybe put the comment for the order on the end. And that'll create a Cartesian product um, nice little query for us that'll show us our order uh, header along with the order items and the header will be on each on each side and so uh, when we open this particular query uh, we don't get what we're expecting uh, because it seems like the data is kind of jumbled up um, it looks like some of them are correct I mean we've got uh, John Smith did order some of those items, and and uh, you know uh, we can see that there are some kind of duplicate, and we can't really explain why. And uh, usually in this case, it's because there's actually a composite key. Um, so if I drag that order ID down, you'll see that um, order one is on all of those rows, um, and uh, order two is on the next four rows, even though there are not four orders for for order two, um, as we can see it, and we know there are not three RC car orders, and so uh, what we'll what we can do is uh, we'll save that, and then we'll go back to our design. So we'll call this one uh, order uh, query, and uh, and then we can go back to our design and see. So usually. Uh, when we have an output that's like this that seems almost right but not quite and we don't know why some of the items are you know the orders and order items match up and and some of them don't seem to it's usually because there's a composite key and in this case uh, we have uh, two two fields that make up the key for orders and uh, there's three in order items and uh, we can we can see that by adding the division uh, because each division has an order one and each division has an order two um, by doing the uh, the uh, double join there um, that's going going to clean up our output um, exactly the way that we want it so we can see that there are two orders um, that john smith made uh, with order or there was two items on order number one and uh, mary johnson only had two uh, or pardon me, only had one order on uh, order two. And so that's what we want to see, but we can't really differentiate what's happening there. So we'll grab the division and we'll just pull that down into our query so we can see. And that makes things a lot um, more clear to us. So now we can see that there was an order two in division B and an order two in division A. And uh, in the same way we have a, uh, <clears throat> Division A and B both have an order five, and by doing that double join, it forces our output to 
to respect that and to uh, give the right output, um, which is what we want to see there. Okay, and moving on to our uh, method two of three, and in this case, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go uh, uh, create and then query design, and we'll close the pop-up and then just drag the tables onto our query, just like we did in the last example. And we'll also um, do our, our joins here just by dragging uh, dra uh, drag and drop. And uh, we'll do order ID and division since we have discovered that these two tables do have a uh, composite key. Now I'm not going to use uh, fields from both tables. I'm just going to use uh, fields from the order items. And I'm going to, just for argument's sake, I'm going to include the orders table to say that I only want um, say uh, orders uh, orders and order items that came from that table. So in this case what we can do is we can rename or we can save our query and we'll call it uh, uh, order um, item list and then once we've done that we can click OK to save and then we can go up and look at our uh, data sheet view uh, here and uh, when we look at that, uh, we can't really tell by doing that. So let's go back uh, to our design. We'll sort that ascending by order item so that we can sort of eyeball it and see what's going on there. And uh, in this case, we can see we've got uh, um, <clears throat> our cars and puppets and Pokemons. Uh, but then we can see, oh, there's actually a duplicate row for Pokemon game. And uh, RC car, we, we have a free one and one for $50. And maybe we want to show that in this query um, because we just want to see um, what's happening uh, with prices and what was, what's been sold and for what prices. Um, so we can, we can see that there's a clear duplicate in our Pokemon game. And so we can go back and uh, we can uh, fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up going to go to our SQL view of our query and then we're going to drop uh, the word distinct directly after the select uh, statement and what that's going to do is it's going to sort of distill down your entire query into only rows that are distinct so they're so they have to be unique and that's uh, a lot of times what we want to see in our output so if I hit uh, the <clears throat> data sheet view now you can see okay there's a there's a distinct row for each one this one has had two with the same price and that's been put into one row and these two still remain as two rows and maybe that's what we wanted to see maybe if it, w if it was sold for two different prices so uh, if we go back to our table here you can see there are actually two order items um, that were like that if we put one if we put the free one back to $50 and we reopen our query, you'll notice that the duplicate row is gone now because we included the word distinct in our uh, query. And that's exactly what we want to see when we use uh, distinct in our queries. So uh, moving on to the next one, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, use a summary query to distill down our duplicates. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to um, put a summary or summary uh, sort of values where uh, we have field values that differ between rows that we, that we want to be on one row. And so um, a good example of that is where uh, we have multiple purchases and but we want to see the sum of the purchase we only want to see one row uh, per item so we'll do similar to what we did last time um, so in this case what we want to see is we want to see uh, the order items when they were ordered and uh, we want to see how much of them were ordered um, so in order to do that we can look at the last date uh, that something was ordered and then sum the uh, the price and so we'll save our query just like we did before and then we can move on and uh, go to our design I'll set the sort to ascending just like we did before 
And uh, as you can see, I created the same kind of query that we did before, except the order date. You can see the RC car and the Pokemon game are both duplicates once again. And uh, this is where we're going to proceed. So as you can see, we have an earlier date and a later date on each of the rows, even though we still have the order price, uh, which seems to be the same uh, on each row, but we do have duplicates. And uh, what we're going to do here is uh, go back to our design view. So now we can sort of see uh, what we're doing, and we're going to click that totals uh, button up at the top right there. And, uh, and that's going to give us access to these uh, different rows in our grid down below here. So now you can see there's a group by, and we want to group by the order item. And uh, for the date, we're going to choose the maximum date to show us the last, when, when that item was last ordered. And then we'll see uh, the order price, and we'll take a sum of that, which will give us the, the sum of uh, items that were ordered. Now, I've left out quantity here um, just for this example. We're assuming it's just one row for one purchase. And, uh, and then we'll go back to our output. Okay, so we've got our output. And just as we wanted, we've got uh, one row per order item, or one row per product. And, uh, and then in the next row, we've got our max of order date. And we can go back and give that a better title. So let's go back to our design. And we'll put, uh, we'll put max date, uh, and then colon space in front of our, our name, uh, on the top uh, row of our grid and we'll put uh, total new as our second item or our second summarized field and if we go back to our datasheet view you can see that this is exactly what we wanted to see we've got some nice titles at the top and we've got one row with no duplicates in there and uh, that is how you remove duplicates in your query output in Microsoft Access. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to remove duplicates in your Microsoft Access database and your output for reports and queries and things like that. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. And uh, make sure to click the bell uh, when you see the bell so you'll be notified of any new content that I put up on the channel. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please make sure to put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions uh, that you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.